Today, I'm going to build an outdoor weather resistant power supply for the Super Night LED light strip out of a battery box. Product information is in the description. Be advised, make sure your wires are on there properly. Otherwise, you're gonna get a really good shot like I did. This is my outdoor power supply for my Super Night LED lights. And it's a 360 watt uh, power supply goes down to 12 well puts it out 360 watts out of the 12. Um, I made this little box cool. switch right here turn it on and off and we'll run my power my wires for my lights on there put the top on it stays you know water resistant. New project today build a power supply for these super night LED strips. This is 16.4 feet with the waterproof kind of seal on there. And we're gonna drive this with the Super Night 360 watt power supply. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this in here, put a switch on it, make it all nice and clean. It's got a little top, put it on here, drill some holes for ventilation. This is a battery box that I got from um, AutoZone. The first thing I'm going to do is decide where I want all my components. Got my power supply and got my outdoor switch or actually this is an indoor switch but it's a toggle switch and it holds uh, uh, enough amperage and watts to, to plug it in the house, the house socket. It's an old computer cable and an outdoor cover. So what I'm going to do is mount my outdoor switch cover here. My toggle switch is going to go inside right here. I'm going to run my power cables inside here. And I have access to all my screws and whatnot, so it stays watertight, well, water resistant, if you will. This top, battery tops have these little clips on them. I left those on there and I put RV sealant where the vent holes would be. And it does have these big vents on the side, but I need to cut some more vents someplace on the side or the bottom or something to, to create an airflow, an air current inside the box. I'm just gonna line this up. I've already marked it, but I just marked it with a, with the screwdriver. Got the four holes and got a straight edge and where they cross is the center. So I need to drill here for my switch and then put a little pilot hole for my uh, screws to hold this on. And that's what I'm gonna do now. Now we just need to get this bigger hole in for the switch. That was a total guess, but Probably guessed wrong. Uh, just a little bit too small. Yeah, that works. <clears throat> a little bit too big, but it'll be fine. Mount my switch right here. Of course, I'm going to mount my switch before I put the cover on because I don't want to have this thing is spring loaded. And I don't want to have to be dealing with trying to tighten this little nut up while I'm under the spring. So probably maybe the last thing I put on, I don't know. So now let's get some power. Now once you've got your cable measured, how you're gonna run it through the box, go ahead and make your cut. And um, we're gonna run this right inside here to the switch. And we'll tuck it all up in there nice and neat. Now on these LED power drivers, you have these different indications on here. And these right here will correspond, I'm not really sure what they mean, one's ground, neutral, and, and hot. Um, they correspond at the end of a computer cable. The same, uh, the same deal right here corresponds with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out what color wire goes to which terminal here. So I'm gonna strip this back a little bit so I can see a little bit better and then find out what go what wire goes where. Now with the multimeter, I'm gonna find out which wire goes where. There we go. So that is your common. Brown is common, which is going to be the little lines right there. So brown wire will go right there. 
and we're going to do the rest of them and hook our wires up. What I like to do in making these connections, I like to tin the end of my wires and wrap it, wrap around a screw and tin it, and that gives you a really good, decent connection. I'm not going to cut these and put a little splice deal or any of that kind of stuff on there. Um, what I like to do is get these, wrap them around a wire, kind of put a little, little loop on it. And to get my solder, soldering iron, and I'll go ahead and I'll tin this surface. And um, it won't come apart. It makes a really great connection. And uh, the, um, the solder just soaks into the, to the wire. Well, should anyway. I'm not good at it, great at it, but just push it in there and now I've got a nice, good, decent little loop. So when I screw that down, now it won't come apart. When I, when I screw it on, it'll be secured and it's not gonna come off. So that's, that's the way I'll do, I'll do all my connections. Now that I've identified my wires, I'm going to make my connections with the tinned ends. Now, if you notice, what I like to do is that where it hooks, the screw screws in this way and I don't know if it helps it or not. It just seems like it would be, it would be easier to hold it in and not come out if you screw opposite to the loop. So I'm going to screw this in, and we should be good to go. Check my connections. Make sure they're all tight. They're pretty tight. Now, one thing you want to do is you want to go through and check to make sure from the images on your computer wire before you make the cut that all these wires are where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to do, this one should be brown. That's brown. This one should be blue. That's blue. Brown, blue. And this one should be green. There we go. So my connections are, are, are correct. Now we're going to secure this so it doesn't flop around. Now we know which which wire does what. This is the live one, and this is the one we're going to put the switch on. We're going to leave these on. This is the one we're going to put that switch on. I've cut it, I'm going to strip it, and mount my switch. I've got the power run in. Got a power box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount driver inside the box with these L brackets that's going to secure it and then I can go ahead and put the switch in and finish it up. Got my <clears throat> driver mounted, little L brackets are in there and I've got to put my wires in here to keep them from being pulled and keeping the power cord from getting pulled so I've got these little clips and you just clip them onto the wire and you can secure that on the inside like that so it'll be nice and clean and the wire won't be all pulled around. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that now and install the switch. I've got my little wire ties, clamp or wire clamps in there. They're secure. This wire is not going to go anywhere. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my switch in before I clean this, the main power cable up because I don't know exactly where I'm going to lay it. I'll come over here and I'm going to do a loop, so if it pulls, it won't pull out. I'm going to do it like that, but I've got to mount this switch now. I've tinned the ends of this so it'll be easy to put on there. And um, so it holds quite nicely, actually, when you do it that way. There, it's my switch. Now, these... I'm going to twist together. I was going to actually solder these together and put some heat shrink on them, but I don't think it's necessary. So I'm going to use some wire nuts to twist them together. Okay, wire nuts are in, everything's good to go. Now we got to get this switch into its hole down here, if it'll reach. 
protector deal, whatever that is, on off deal. And that's it. <clears throat> Now everything's nice and secured in here. Switches down. Got my little clamps in there. The wire can't pull out. Um, everything's secured nicely. Now what we're going to need to do is we know everything is right. All the wires are right. This little deal right here is for your voltage. So we're going to put our, our, our meter on here and test this. Make sure we're putting out 12 volts. Yeah, I know the place is a mess. We just moved in here, so we haven't organized everything yet. All right, <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna do. Plug it in, make sure the switch is off. Switch is off, plug it in, turn it on. And we get no light. That's not good. A little green, oh shit. That's not good, what the hell was that for? How, that's not even possible for me to shock. How, do, how the hell did that happen? Well, I thought it was uh, this unit here. I thought this part right here was messed up, but it's not. I don't think anything's wrong with it. Well, before I shocked myself, um, <laughs> I had a walkway that was yesterday. I got frustrated. Um, made a super bad error, and I was trusting the, the uh, ohmmeter and multimeter to tell me which color was what and not actually test the wires coming out of the, the power supply so what I did is I thought that the green wire was the hot the green isn't the hot it's the brown wire that's the hot and the blue is the neutral so now I can hook it up correctly and I'm hoping that the 360 watt power inverter driver thing is not messed up so I'm gonna rehook this up I fixed it I'm gonna put my switches back in put everything back on and then um, see what happens. <laughs> Everything should be wired up properly now. I've got it plugged in. Now this little green light should come on and I shouldn't get a shock this time. So I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna hit my switch. There you go. Little green lights on. Now what we gotta do is we have to check these terminals here to make sure that they're putting out 12 volts. And we're gonna do that with our multimeter. We'll just dial this until we get twelve almost and our power supply is ready to go uh, now we're going to go and hook up the lights and we'll push some wattage this is going to be great i finally got all this set up and i've got my battery box down here in the corner i've got my music controller up here i've got the uh the controller for the lights that run around the rim of the house right here and I've got my two remote controls um, whichever one I want to use to control whichever box that I want to use battery box sits down here in the corner it has been raining and it's all nice and dry inside I've got my lights hooked up with the power supply uh, there's three different uh, sources that you can use coming out with the power supply uh, it does have vents on the side of it, so I run the wires out the vents right here. And the switch works perfectly down here. Battery box sits here in the corner. Power supply comes up this piece, this corner piece that I painted the same color as the house. Put a little notch in it, and here's my two controllers here, and it continues up. Wires come out. I'm not completed with this project, but I'm almost completed with the project. Got a splitter, and that power supply runs these lights all the way down the side of the house there. and all the way down to the side of the house here. Now, coming from that back corner where the power supply is, there's one strip of lights and then another strip of lights. So there's two strips of lights all the way from there all the way to this point here. Once you get past two strips of lights, you have to ha create you have to have more power into it well i bought one of these rgb amplifiers and it was mounted up there and i i separately power supplied this with a different power supply that comes from that side the power supply that comes in from this piece that i put on the house 
goes all the way down and the wire comes out right there. I haven't hidden the wire yet, but it goes all the way around the house, all the way down into that corner. This amplifier was being powered by that power supply, but for some reason, these, this, for some reason, this other strand of lights from this connection wouldn't be the same color. So I had to change that. The entire back portion of the house, from one corner all the way down the other corner, is lit up with the LED lights. Uh, power supply that we put in the battery box runs two strips on this side from that corner all the way down here to this corner it runs two strips this power supply here runs one and then two strips to the end and we're set it works perfect power supply is in that corner right there uh, we built this little tight tabletop and I ran lights underneath this table on a separate separate power source completely from from the house into this separate power supply that runs the LED strips around this. This one 16.4 strip of lights that go underneath this table all the way around. Power supply for the house. Extension cord runs down temporarily right there up underneath inside the table. There's the temporarily mounted uh, controller right there. There's the lights that run underneath the table. I go all the way around and provide really brilliant nice illumination. And this is the result we get from all that work.